Hey guys, how you doing? I wanted to come to you with a quick message following up with Easter. After Jesus was resurrected, that's really just the beginning of my story and your story. Because of what Jesus did on the cross and because of his resurrection, our lives are changed. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. We can be in Christ because of the sacrifice that he uh, offered on the cross. We can give our life to him and now live this new life. And so coming out of Easter, this is our opportunity to shine. This is our opportunity to grow. And I wanted to read um, uh, a quick verse here from the book of Luke, because in the book of Luke, after Jesus was resurrected, they weren't, they weren't sure um, if he was going to resurrect, the women went to the tomb and said, he's not there. And they're like, all right, whatever. They weren't sure whether they were going to believe that he was alive. And then uh, Jesus shows up to a, a couple disciples on the road to Emmaus. And after he shows up to them and he talks to them, it says their hearts burned as he spoke to them. And when the word of God, when Jesus was explaining the Old Testament prophecies about Jesus, uh, about him fulfilling um, the Old Testament prophecies and being the Messiah, their hearts burned and, and um, they got really excited. Then all of a sudden they realized it was Jesus talking to them. And then in Luke 24, um, verse uh 33, um, it, it, Jesus had spoken to them and then he disappeared. And it says, then within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. There they found the 11 disciples and the others who had gathered with them who said, the Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. And so here in, in this book, the, these disciples on the road to Emmaus, when Jesus appeared to them, they wanted to run and tell everybody else, man, the Lord really is risen. And they got excited about that. And that's basically where we are. We want to be in that place like those disciples were where, all right, now that he's risen, what do we do? And, and when he spoke to them and explained to them the word, told them, taught them kingdom principles, now all of a sudden they came alive. And now all of a sudden, all they wanted to do was go tell everyone else about it. And so today, I want to say, what do we do with the Easter seed, right? What do we do with the Easter seed? So Easter is the story of the gospel, the good news that Jesus came to redeem us. That's the message. The message. That message is the seed that we plant. That's the message is the seed that we plant. Now, what happens when we, we want to continue to plant that seed? And so um, we want to keep sharing that good news. Now, for some of you, like we had six people give their life to Christ on Sunday. That seed has been planted. And when that seed takes root, what do you do? If you're listening to this today and you've already given your life to Jesus, then that seed has taken root. What do we do? Well, this is the time of year when we look out and we all start thinking about gardening. We start seeing green leaves come onto um, uh, bushes and plants and flowers coming up and, and buds and all of that kind of stuff. And so today... I just want to remind you that this year is a year that we've committed to say that we are rooted to grow, rooted to grow. And so that seed has been planted. And when that seed takes root, what do we do? Well, first of all, we want to get into the sun. Some of you maybe had some seedlings in the house and it's time to bring them outside and plant them in the ground. We want to get into the sun. Basically, God sent his one and only son and we want to get in the sun. We want to get in the sun. We want to think about Jesus. We want to live the life of Jesus. I want to encourage you that in our Bible reading plan tomorrow, we're starting the book of Matthew. We're going to read through the story of Jesus' life. We want to get into the sun. What do you do when a seed takes root? You want it to get in the sun. Then you want to water it because that when you water it, it keeps the soil soft so the roots can grow. So you want to continue to water it. The Bible says that we're washed with the water of the word. And so we want to be in the word of God and growing. Then you want to fertilize it to keep the soil rich, right? We want to fertilize it. So we want to grow in our understanding. We want to read the word. We want to discuss it with one another. We want to study it. We want to fertilize our faith so that we can keep growing. The Bible says, do not merely hear the word and deceive yourself. Do what it says. And so we want to be hearing the word and doing what it says so that that seed grows. And then 
there's one more thing that I want to talk about is in order for a seed to grow, sometimes you've got to weed the garden. You've got to make sure that that seed is in a place where it can grow and that there's nothing there to choke it out. And maybe there's some things in your life that you need to weed to make sure that you grow. There's some things you need to get out of your life to make sure that you stay the course and stay the path and stay on fire for Jesus. And so um, I want to encourage you. If you're not a part of our Bible reading plan, um, I'll post the verses uh, with this video, but um, join our Bible reading group, okay? And then you can get the Bible reading plan and um, join our Facebook group where we can be interactive and share what we're studying and learning so that we can make sure that the seed of Easter, the gospel, the good news is planted and that we continue planting it, but it is takes root and that it grows. All right? Hey, God bless you guys. Thanks for listening today and keep growing.